Hey, today I am going to talk about financial modeling best practices. If someone asks me what are the few things that you should be doing to become better at financial modeling, this is exactly what I would tell them. If you are new to finance and FPNA, learning about financial modeling can be a little overwhelming and having access to right resources like this video series can be a game changer for your finance career. Dealing with complicated and broken financial models can be very frustrating while you are working. This results in a lot of chaos, adds so much stress and fixing errors in financial model is a big challenge. I don't want you to be spending hours and hours of your time working on a broken financial model or maybe finding errors and fixing errors in a model where that those errors could have been avoided in the first place. Hi. My name is Asif Masani. I am the author of the book All About FPNA. My mission is to help 1 million finance professionals master FPNA skills. I have helped hundreds of finance professionals master financial modeling and FPNA through my books and online courses. By the end of this video, we will go over my top 12 FPNA financial modeling best practices. Whether you are just starting in finance and FPNA or if you are working on your next financial model, these tips will come in very handy. So let's dive right in. Tip number one is to avoid duplicate inputs. Hard coding and input more than once can lead to inefficiencies, increased chances of errors and difficulties in maintaining and updating the model later on. When you are re-entering the same input in different paces, it not only consumes more time, but also it makes the model less flexible. You should aim for an approach where inputs are defined just once and you should refer them as and when needed throughout the model. Tip number two, do not calculate more than once inside the model. Recalculating the same values multiple times not only consumes more computational resources, but also introduces the possibility of inconsistencies. By referring back to your initial calculations which you made the first time, you make the model more robust and consistent. This makes troubleshooting issues and finding those errors a lot easier. Tip number three is to avoid numbers inside the formulas. When you include any numbers within the formulas, especially hard-coded numbers, it makes the model rigid and less adaptable to modifications. There can be an exception to this rule when that number is truly a constant, meaning that it will never change throughout the model's life cycle. Tip number four is to avoid long Excel formulas. Long formulas can be hard to understand, not only for you as a model creator, but also for anyone who may need to refer, review or modify that model later on. You should try using Excel formulas that are clear, concise and logically structured. Breaking down complex calculations into smaller and manageable steps you should be aiming for. Tip number five is grouping versus hiding rows and columns. It is advisable to group rows and columns instead of hiding them. Hidden rows and columns usually result in lack of visibility and potentially causing a lot of confusion and oversight. Grouping rows and columns instead can increase transparency and help you to clearly organize data inside the model. Tip number six is to center align instead of merging cells. Whenever you feel like merging a cell inside a model, Consider using the center, center across selection formatting option instead of merging cells. Merging cells usually leads to complications and reduced flexibility. While if you use center across selection, this will maintain the individual cell functionality while visually centering the content that you wanted to do. Tip number seven is making use of put notes and comments inside the model. Adding footnotes and comments is always a good practice which improves clarity and provides some additional context inside the model. Let's talk about footnotes first. Footnotes can be used to explain assumptions, methodologies or any important points that you want to highlight to the user of the model. They appear usually at the bottom of the model 
and they show up when the model is printed on paper. On the other hand, comments are built within the cells, allowing for real-time collaboration, ensuring that more details are accessible to anyone who is reviewing the model on the computer or laptop. You should structure your model as clearly and as simply as possible instead of making it more complicated. You can do this by including a instruction tab inside the model which other users can use to navigate throughout the model in your absence. All assumptions should be in one place and including an assumptions tab inside the model where all the assumptions are documented at one place is a good practice. This brings me to tip number 11. Save your work often. So if you are working on a local computer, you should save your work every few minutes. Otherwise, there are chances that you might have done a lot of work which may not have got, gotten saved. The final tip is to take a step back and to look at the bigger picture while you are designing the model. This is to avoid a rework later. Sometimes it might happen that you might work on a model and after doing a lot of work, you might figure out this is not the right approach. So it is always better to think about what you are doing while you are working on the model. If you found this video to be helpful, do give it a thumbs up. Check out the links to the program on financial modeling for FPNA in the description. And please do hit the subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.